Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this episode of Every Effect and After Effects Explained, we're going to be taking a look at the Stylize folder. So you might be familiar with a lot of these from Photoshop, and a lot of them add a unique style or artistic touch or character to the image. So first we have brush strokes. This one will make it seem like your image is composed of brush strokes, and we can also choose the angle of the stroke from diagonal to horizontal and the length and size of the strokes as well. So not only does this add that brush stroke look, but they also take a random jittery animation. So not only could you add these to video clips, but you could also add these to text or shape layers or logos if you wanted to give those a more like animated brush stroke feel. And you have different options on how to blend it as well. Next up we have cartoon. This will try to make your image kind of look like a comic book drawing or a cartoon effect. It kind of posterizes and simpl simplifies the colors and adds like a black outline to different shapes. So this can be cool if you're going for that cartoony comic book look. And you just have a lot of different adjustments on the detail and blending of the effect. Next up we have CC block load. This one's cool. It's almost like a transition effect that you can do because you have zero completion at first and then you can have full completion. So it'll load your image first, like in stripes, in low quality, then it'll scan over again, and then one more time for full quality. So it can be cool for like a technical transition loading effect. It's kind of similar to an effect that we did in the transition episode, and that's the CC line sweep effect. It kind of has a similar idea of this where it loads in the image by lines, but in this case, it goes in and progressively scans higher to low quality. And you can choose the number of scans that it does. So it's default four, but I could do 10 or 12 and even in, it'll start from even less quality. And remember, you just apply those with keyframes if you want, or expressions if you want. Next up, we have CC Burn Film. This one's cool. Again, another one that can be used as a kind of transition effect, even though it's not in the transition effect folder. And this allows us to slowly burn out the image or burn it in. Next up, we have CC glass. This will kind of turn our image into like a glass reflection, bubbly and distortion type of look. So we can change the softness of it and also the height of the displacement, but it can create some really cool distortions to make it appear as though we're looking through glass or reflected through glass. Again, this is similar in the transition folder. There's the glass wipe, which uses a similar technique as a transition. So not only can you choose its own layer as the bump map or like the distortion map, you can displace it based on another layer as well. So you can have it take on the texture of any layer and displace this layer. Next up, we have hex tile and also Collida to go along with that. These are cool tiling effects. So you can tile in as many times as you want or fold so that it's more like symmetrical at the lines or even fold seamlessly. And you can choose the center and the rotation. So you get these cool kaleidoscopic type of effects, which if you animate them can create some really unique distortions and backgrounds out of any clip really. Along with that, we have CC Collida, which is another similar type of effect, which allows you to fold the image into itself into like kaleidoscopic patterns and play around with the rotation and the mirroring as well, the type of mirroring that goes on, even with like color effects. If we add kaleidoscopes onto these, we can create cool backgrounds and tiles, perhaps something for a title screen or background screen, and it looks a way more complicated than it actually was to create. Next up, we have CC Mr. Smoothie. So this allows us to map two colors, so sample point A and B, onto the different shapes of the entire image. So for example, right now it's mapping color A and color B over the whole image, However, I can even choose to map these colors onto a different layer and have the, these colors from this clip be mapped onto this one. But if we were sticking with the same layer, I can also change the A and B point. So we're using different like gradient map colors. For example, 
the blue and pink flowers on this umbrella. If I was to use the sample point A and sample point B on these, you'll see now we have like a blue and pink gradient map. And we can change the phase or rotation of how that's blended. And we can also change like the type of color loop, just a simple AB or BA, like reversing it, or ABA, like tripling it, or like doubling it on the end of itself. So we get different color mixes. And you can also adjust the smoothness of it. However, when we're working with a moving clip, for example, sample point A is not always going to be on that blue flower because if we move forward in the clip, now the umbrella moves and now we're going to get a different result. So it can be cool to create some weird abstract colors going on or I'm sure you can combine it in more technical ways. But this is the CC Mr. Smoothie effect. Next up we have CC Plastic. So this is another effect that you might recognize from Photoshop. It almost like wraps your entire image in plastic wrap. Um, like, you know, those couches, they get wrapped in plastic sometimes to protect them. And you get the same kind of light and shading of a plastic wrap. So in the effects control panel of this one, you can adjust things about like the softness and the texture of the plastic wrap. And you can also choose the bump layer. So it kind of makes the most sense to use itself. But if for some reason you wanted the plastic wrap to have the shape of another layer, you could do that as well. You can also change the light color. So it's white by default, but if you wanted like a green or yellow overcast reflection, you can do that. Kind of create like a plastic world effect. Next up we have CC Repetile, and this is another tiling effect. Now for us to see this one in action, we're actually gonna have to have the layer be smaller than the composition size. So I'm going to open up the transform panel and maybe lower it to like 50% just so we can see what's going on. And if I add the Repetile effect, it allows us to play around with the edges or tile the edges. So I can expand the right edge if I need. I can expand the left edge and also the top and bottom, how, however far I need. And I can choose how they tile. So just a simple repetition. Or I can make them flipped, maybe only the left and right flip or the top and bottom flip or even just have it unfolding seamlessly on itself. So there's lots of times that stuff like this can come in handy. It's kind of similar to the tiling effects that we showed for the previous, but kind of allows us a little bit different of a manual control over it. And remember, not only can we tile layers, we can also tile text and shapes. So I can have this tile, for example, on this text, extend down over and over and over, which can be a cool stylish effect and I can have it expand in different ways. So it can be really cool for shapes and texts and patterns as well. Next up we have CC Threshold. This is like the threshold effect that you find in Photoshop or many of these programs. It basically allows us to split the image into a black and white point based on like a middle point that we set. And you can choose the luminance, which is the brightness, or the red, green, and blue threshold, which is the different color channels or based on the saturation. So this can be great as we've seen with a lot of other clips where they ask us for like a bump map or, a, or another layer to point to. Sometimes you need to separate into black and white so that you can give After Effects the information of this black and white layer to do other effects. For example, if I was to apply another clip on top of this and set it to screen, now you see that we kind of created a filling in of all the shadows. Another one is threshold red, green, blue, kind of just like I showed you. But in this case, you can adjust the individual color channels to get the red, green, or blue color information, which again can come really in handy when you're doing different composition blending things together where you only want the information of one color channel. After that, we have CC Vignette, just a simple tool to add a little vignette around the corners. I'll demonstrate on a solid white layer, just so you can see what's going on. When you add a vignette onto the clip, you see we can have some shading onto the corners. And this can be great for backdrops, or it can be great to kind of add some shading around the edges of a video clip, or whatever center point you choose. You can choose whatever center point you want. 
So that's the CC vignette tool. Next up, we have emboss and color emboss. So these are ways to add some relief and sharpness or impress the image onto itself. You can see if I increase it, how it, it kind of splits the colors apart from each other. But when you have it just at a couple pixels strength, it effectively just kind of creates some sharpness onto the clip or just really pops out every little detail and grain in the ground. So you can kind of cook and destroy your image if you want, or you can just use it for a little bit of sharpness relief. And you can adjust the contrast and blend of it if you want to kind of change the strength of it. Along with that, you also have emboss, which in this case, rather than just applying it onto the clip, only gives you the difference that you're getting. And it applies them onto a perfect 50% gray background. So if I was to set this clip on top of itself, if I copy and paste it, and I set it to something like overlay, you see we basically get kind of a similar effect because when you set something like overlay to a perfectly gray clip, it effectively cancels itself out. Again, you can also apply these to like text and shape layers. Another idea for you, especially since you might not always be working on video clips in After Effects, is like adding more texture or strengthening the texture of something like this paper photo that I have. I could use the emboss or color emboss clips to really increase the grain that you see on this paper, allowing the texture to come out or sharpening things. But sometimes you might not always want to sharpen things, so don't think you always have to sharpen every clip. Along with those, kind of in a similar sense, we have find edges, which just gets the edge information of the images. And we can invert it as well, so we just have it on black or white background. And that allows us to blend it in whatever way we want. So here's just another example where we're just finding the edges. Next up, we have glow. This adds an extra glow on top of our image, and we can adjust the radius, the smoothness of that glow to be as bright or dark as we want. And we can even add the glow onto shape or text layers to create a general glow around them. So that could come in handy, but remember you also have the layer styles available on your clip, such as outer glow and inner glow. Next up, we have mosaic. This adds like a tiling effect onto your clip and you can choose how many horizontal or vertical blocks that you use to make up the original image again. I've had tutorials where I've shown how to use this to create like censoring pixels or pixelate an image. I suppose similar to the block load effect, you could also do some sort of loading effect where you increase the block sizes until you basically have the original quality again. Remember, you can always use many of these on different blending modes and then use those blocky animations that you get and have them apply onto another layer. So these are just random ideas I'm giving you with a lot of these stylized effects and a lot of these effects in general that are not so functional. The uses of them are kind of unlimited up to your creativity on how you blend and composite things together. Next up, we have motion tile. This is again similar to like the hex tile and the repetile effects. But in this case, it will allow us to shrink our clip or increase it of our image and tile it right away. You can mirror the edges and you can also adjust the phase of it and also the center of the tile. So for example, we could do like a vertical reel, like repeating itself kind of like the offset effect. If we wanted to rotate something in this way, you can mirror the edges as well. So we get this cool like unlimited motion effect that we can get. Next up we have posterize. This is kind of like the threshold effect, but it'll limit your clip into different levels. So the lower you get it, the more like simplified it gets. Here's only three levels of posterization. And if I actually open the Lumetri scopes. So you can just see some information about what's going on. The scopes are basically just a graphical representation of the colors and brightness and saturation of our clips. So as I increase the levels or decrease them, you see at two, it basically splits down 
everything into either the shadows or the highlights. As I increase the levels to three, four, or five, you see now it splits them into five different sections, kind of choking or squeezing in each of the colors into its own little group, which gives us these rough posterized edges. So again, this can kind of give us a start at a paper cutout or like a cartoony type of effect, or it can be used in all type of more technical ways where you want it to limit the colors into two or three levels. Next up, we have roughen edges. So I'm back on that paper texture that I had. If I add roughen edges, it'll allow me to, like the title says, roughen the edges. But we see in the effects control panel, we can adjust the edge type. So cut or roughen and also the strength and sharpness and different details about it. So whether you're adding this onto a logo or a video clip, it allows you to add a rougher texture to the edges as you like. And also you can animate it. So the evolution, if we were to add keyframes on there, you can give it some texture and animation. Next up we have scatter. This kind of will scatter all of the pixels of the image. So if I increase it, we see it gets like grainy and noisy. And if I increase it even more, we kind of turn the whole thing into like a noisy reflection. It almost even can look like, like spray paint or even like a really fine textured glass. Next up we have strobe light. This is one that I've demonstrated many times in Premiere Pro. It works pretty much the same. It allows us to add a strobe every so often. So in this case, every one second, it'll flash for 0.5 seconds whatever color we choose. So if I choose red, you'll see that every half a second, it'll strobe red. And not only can you make it strobe a color, but you can also just make it create a transparency each time it strobes. So in this way, you could add strobing blinks onto your clips and you can adjust the speed of it. So if I wanted to make it even faster, I could do like twice a second that it'll blink. So this can be cool. If you want, I've done full separate tutorials going over many different ways to use strobe lights. After that, we have texturize. This allows me to add a texture onto the layer. So for example, if I'm working on this white layer that we made and I have that paper layer that I still had, I can set the texture layer to be that paper. And then I should have the paper texture applied onto this white backdrop that we created. Here's the same concept, but with a colored gradient, it allows us to add the texture of this paper layer. So you can use anything you want as the texture layer, even other video clips. Lastly, we once again have threshold effect. Now, I believe some of these are repeated just because, again, similar to the obsolete folder, there's just certain redundancies as newer versions of effects and upgrades and third-party plugins get built in. So you can see it entirely splits our image into black or white and just changes the balance of strength between them. So that's everything in the stylized video effects folder. In the next episode, we're going to be going over the text folder and some interesting things you can do with the numbers and time code effects. If you've enjoyed this video, definitely subscribe to my channel so you can stay tuned for all my new videos. We're going over all of the effects in Adobe After Effects in this playlist. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you over in the next episode.